thanks for talking to me, having me on. It's all right, it's all right. It's interesting to hear, interested to hear what you have to say. So welcome, Edward Ot- Otley. How's it going? Yeah, I, I've actually got another name up there, haven't I? Yeah, so it's Edward Otley, yes. Um, yeah, it's going very well, thank you, Chris. And it, it was good meeting you at the... Well, I, I believe I met you, or I let's say I was put in contact with you at the Richard Vobes talk um, in Needham Market, where... Um, and so that's what led us um, to talk. And thank you for having me uh, along to talk about my trial by jury journey if we give it that sort of headline yeah i'm i'm very interested to hear what you've got to um say on this so please let's let's hear it it sounds incredible so i'm i'm looking forward to seeing how how you're slaying the system yeah well, thanks then, um, Chris. Um, yeah, well, it's, it started off, um, essentially, um, it was a, a sort of fire safety issue that came out of our pro- property, my property management work at my um, company. And um, that led to a, a court case um, that is ongoing, actually. And... Yeah. And you could just say, well, and it's very unfortunate, and no one wants a court case, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, through my, um, and it could have been left at that, um, in that you'd normally approach a solicitor, and also for a court case, you'd have a, a barrister, because quite often solicitors, I think they're not insured to sort of represent you in court, although they advise you en route to court. Mm-hmm. Um But that can be an expensive, is obviously an expensive time with with them. They have their fees. And so um, at this stage, it could very well put people off, um, whatever their court appearance is, because of the sheer cost of this, um, potentially. Um, And um, so you, you start off on the wrong foot straight away thinking wow I, I could be out of pocket here so maybe i should make this court appearance as quick as possible and quite often from previous experience um the solicitor is of the same mind and might try and persuade you that a magistrate's court is the way to go probably plead guilty um even though you're not guilty um but that gets it out of the way and they'll probably be lenient with you if you do that as well but um i sort of looked into this and obviously like anybody was was nervous to start with haven't come been up against quite such a situation before but um where i suddenly filed though in the back of my mind was um being a member of stand in the park um, here in Ipswich on a Sunday that people had spoken about a number of issues that during the pandemic, um, for example, was the main reason why it started, Stand in the Park, was to talk over issues. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'd heard about common law and I first it all went above my head and I thought, God, this all seems extraordinarily complicated. I'm not sure I... I can deal deal with this really, and also I didn't have any reason to deal with it um, because nothing was happening apparently to me legally. Um, so, um, however, it stayed with me, and also through Telegram, I was in touch with other groups, and I noticed there was one particular group, Telegram group, um, in the north of England, well, sort of Peak District area. Um, who were doing a lot about, seems a lot of posts on common law, and they started to talk about actual court appearances, which I hadn't heard of before. So I got in touch, went up to their stand in, in the park, and spoke to them to one of the people there who'd been one of the people main posting about 
um, court appearance and trial by jury, particularly, which interested me. And he gave me the confidence to um, enter the court without a, a solicitor and barrister. And so my journey so far has been through the magistrate court and the crown court, um, whereby I am asking for a trial by jury. Now, yeah. as I said, because of the expense of all this, quite often people, and without any um, sort of knowledge that I'm getting from this stand-in-the-park coach who's who's been to court himself and been through the procedure, um, you probably wouldn't, you may have heard about a, a, a jury trial um, mm. and that may be, have seen it on TV or whatever, but you'd never have thought of a trial by jury for yourself because maybe people also think that their case is too small or not worth it. Um, yeah, and yeah. yeah, also don't know anything about it. Um, so that's, so. so what happened um, was started this journey going through the courts to get a trial by jury then um, and you know uh, working out a way of doing it because actually in the country and this isn't me but reading a recent um, the script of a recent lecture or when I say recent 2017 um, at that point there seemed to be only two percent of trials were by jury so we've got a long way to to go um but i'm at, i'm at the stage now and i've got to let you ask me some questions i'm sort of going on um but i'm at the stage now where i've been given a trial by jury well get, uh, offered a trial by jury um next year um and that though in so that's where I am. But in in looking into this and talking to my, I call him my coach, up in the Peak District. Um, but also reading around the subject now, um, I am you know a lot more knowledgeable as to what a trial by jury actually is and how it affects our society, how important it is to our society. I suddenly you know the the curtains were drawn open and my eyes were wide open to something that I'd never um, ever realised before. Um, it went from me having to face a court process to repercussions um, across the whole country to do with our democratic processes. Hmm. Yeah. So remind me again what the initial start of this was, what, what kicked um, this off? Yes, what started it was um, a fire safety issue brought right. by the fire service um, to do with, um, you know, all really since the Grenville Tower. Right, so um, regu regulation, safety regulation. Regu a regulatory offence, as it were, a regulatory charge. Right, okay. So one where the goalposts are moving anyway, and um, you know, it's it's an area where you know some people may think, well, that's quite tricky. Um, and how will a trial by jury be able to handle such a thing? Because you'd have thought that it's a very specialist subject. Um, but that's how my journey started. Was and I think a lot of leaseholders, if I call the owners of flats that, certainly in Ipswich and towns across the country, are affected by changes in building regulations, um, even though the building was signed off originally by mm -hmm. planning control. They're now living in flats that they're told aren't up to standard and don't know what to do about it. So um, that's where we are so it's not common now to see see buildings in the papers or you know people having problems either as owners or in our case as, as managers but where it's taken me is instead of now just being a manager of a property faced with of a of a building um, and we're purely the managing agents we don't own the property we haven't got any financial interest in it whatsoever 
Um, but putting that aside, suddenly um, we're, um, I've learned so much about how important it is, not only with a sort of charge that regulatory charges, but all charges um, that m people might be faced um, out there, um, out in the world, where it's so important that not to be put off by um, the court process, but to um, move forward and and get a trial by jury. Also, the other part, part, important part of this is that if you're called to jury service, that it's such an important part of democracy um, to um, take part in it. Um, and I could move on to say why it's, you know, this trial by jury not only would sorts out people's individual cases in a fair way in front of 12 members of their community, of their peers, as it's officially called, so you're fair, you have a fair trial, but it also opens up the whole point where you can, um, you know, look at something, a situation through your conscience um, and judge the facts, look at the law, um, and even if in judging the facts it could be said that, say it was... I mean, if we went back down to the lockdown or people protesting in, in London or other cities um, and there was a law or legislation which said that people were not allowed to um, protest for, some, for whatever reason, then if that was taken to court, say certain people were arrested and brought to court and said you shouldn't have organised such a march, then a jury might very well, and this is the beauty of a jury, they're totally independent, they've got no financial reward, they're purely acting as um, honest um, people um, who vote or, or, or just in the country, mm -hmm. and they can sit back and say, well, we agree that you know, they were marching in London and they were congregating in London, but we've got no problem with that. So um, we find you um, not guilty. A couple, so, a couple of things. Words, Sorry, yeah. finish your point if you like. No, you carry okay. on. Okay. Um, well, I was going to say a couple of things. One, I mean, depending on what you know about common law, maritime law, buying into the whole court thing some people would say that you don't even need to attend court mm. it, you know depend i mean it depends i don't know how far you've tried i mean i know somebody who hasn't paid council tax now for two years yes and he's never gone to court and every time you get a court summons it's not a summons is it? it's an invitation but obviously yeah. i don't know i, I I don't know where that stands with you because you would be that's a corporation, isn't it? You're a business. Well, it's me personally, although we're a corporation and I didn't mean to show my name there, and I'm, I'm no, not brilliant, okay. not brilliant on Zoom as to how I change it, to be honest. <laughs> I should have put Edward Oxley. Um, as Edward Oxley, I'm named as Edward Oxley in the court. Um, so this is much. It's not just corporate. It's me as a person, a living person, Edward Otley. A person, has... a person is a fictitious entity. A person mm. is your straw man. Yes. Now, what I would say about all this is that I'm not an expert on that. And I know people who are effectively going down the route that you're talking about, in, uh, you know, involved with council tax and other matters. What I would say, and that's, you know, they're welcome, and that's an important thing to explore, another mm -hmm. area of sovereignty to explore. Where I am is that um, I'm clearly um, summoned to court, and in terms of turning up, um, I'm involved in a democratic process where... 
if it was just if I was just in front of a judge, then yes, that would be um, the executive. If we call the judge that, someone who is paid by um, his, um, uh, uh, you know, county council, whoever is holding the, the courts, and has got um, a reputation maybe to uphold or may have any number. I'm sure them judges overall are trying to be as fair as possible. But whether they like it or not, they have will have certain hold. There'll be a certain hold over them, um, and where I'm coming from is if we can hold more trial by jury, then we can actually, um, you know, look at say if you were looking at council tax or if you're looking at tax in general, you could um, go to court. But in front of a trial by jury, in other words, 12 people who are of your same status as you and as a community people taken by lot, I think these days it's from the re the role, registered role, so you have to be electorate, yeah. so that is a slight restriction, but anyway. Um, then you've got, they will look at the case and and could very well say, well, this actually, yes, you haven't, in the case of tax, yes, you haven't paid the money. However, um, in these circumstances, it seems a very unfair levy um, on on your um, salary or, or, you know, on your home, um, on your, or they might have other reasons as to why, but they'd look at it in a fair, truthful examine their consciences has that person in a premeditated way done anything that is is wrong um in our eyes in other words it may have broken the law technically in that they should have paid their if we go to the they should have paid their tv license driver's license or council tax um but the important thing of of trial by jury is that they can through the court system actually put a line in the sand and say well you know this is essentially they're saying this is an unfair law um it, it's uh, another name for it, it is they can nullify legislation so i was going to say then, yeah they've, they've got the power to not only convict uh, or to free somebody who's being tried, they've also got the power to say to the judge, we don't agree with the the act or the statute. And so exactly. many people don't realise that. You're right there. So that's what's important of it. If we can get to the heart of things, you can actually um, neutralise it altogether for mm. everybody. Because once people start doing that, then legislators in Parliament... Um, we'll start to see, well, actually, we can see that people don't like this law. And also the judiciary uh, judges will also say, well, we're very uncomfortable um, now sort of ruling in a certain way with this law. It's mm -hmm. clear that people think it's an unfair law. Therefore, it, it won't be upheld. So by that trial, by jury, you've, as you say, overturn statute and all power back to the people and even the judiciary themselves at a high level. Um, for example, during the pandemic, it was talked about that you should do away with trial by juries altogether and just have a judge to speed up the court process for a while, temporary period, apparently. Mm. But luckily, um, people fought about against that and the judiciary themselves right at the top said no they actually wrote and there were lectures and and came out and said no we 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 don't want that because a trial that's, by jury that's the start of something terrible that is yeah and a trial by jury even the judges admitted this um protects all our freedoms because um in a previous lecture, I can quote one judge of saying that um, Lord Devlin, the lamp that shows that freedom lives is the um, quote for his 
idea of trial by jury, and he was a top judge, um, another top judge, more recent one, a safeguard against oppression and dictatorship. So what they're saying is that we've got parliament on the one hand and we've got trial by jury. Now, most people think that voting or parliament, depending on how you feel parliament is going these days, is what democracy is all about and that democracy is about a majority. But actually, it's not about that at all. You have laws framed by the executive in Parliament, so MPs quite often have to go along with it through the whip process. Mm. You have civil servants and ministers and all that, um, and they draft the laws. Um, and so, unfortunately, once you voted the party in, they start drafting all these laws and the executive gets involved and... If you didn't have another way of stopping them, which is what a trial by jury is, before you know it, they'll have the laws will be so authoritarian that we'll be living in a in a one party type state. So and judges know this. So where the trial by jury comes in, it's a twin process. You've got parliament on the one hand, you've got trial by jury on the other. A trial by jury means that the ordinary man and woman gets called into court and if just one of them, when they give their verdict, um, their consciences tells them that this is an unfair law and that's the sounding board that Parliament need and judges need. They need a sounding board because they don't, if they can help it, they want to be popular, inverted commas, um, OK, there are people in the background who might be more uh, dark forces, but the ordinary MP, if he can break away from his whip or once he's at home, um, is looking for, you know, a level of popularity. They want to be able to walk in their town or constituency and say that the laws we we have under, our, you know, since I've been in Parliament are fair. And so the trial by jury, the common person the ordinary person is suddenly taking part and that's all power to the people again um taking part in the legislative process and saying hang on um we're not happy with this law no it isn't fair and just um well i love your optimism in in the uh in the process when it comes to the the, the jury thing um, yes so are you are you quite confident um, when it comes to your particular case, then, well, you can never. You've got to keep an open mind. Um, obviously, um, the tr the jury. That's why you're innocent until proven guilty, um, and a trial by jury will determine whether you're innocent or not. Whereas, if you go in front of a magistrate's court or a judge. They are duty bound. They've sworn an oath to uphold the law, and if um, if Parliament are producing, as far as the trials by jury are concerned, once you get there, instead of a a, a judge led justice, um, you know you could be unfairly treated if it's an unjust law. So um, the system for many people is a lottery because you you should be innocent until proven guilty but if you're just put in front of a judge or you know people magistrates well, these days is, trial by media for yeah or trial by media rather than another kind of trial by ordeal if we go back to the medieval times yeah a sort of medieval um fun fight type in an arena almost with the media um, yeah, so the the only fair way to find out is a trial by jury. And so I'm extraordinarily pleased um, about getting a trial by jury and recommend everyone to do the same. Um, and it goes back to, um, you know, in this country, the history, it, it was embedded in our constitution in 1215 in the Magna Carta. Yeah. And then there were, after that, there were various um, 
pieces of documents signed which verified and backed it up. But before the Magna Carta, um, it was widespread throughout Europe that people got together, um, 12 people, and judged their you know, colleagues or, or their neighbours in a fair way. And it might be a land dispute or um, mainly probably a land or trespassing or something like that. Um, and then they'd uh, uh, agree it. And if, if one of them said, my conscience is that this person's done no wrong, then they'd go free. Um, if not, if 12 were in total agreement, then there'd be a fine of some kind. But this is so embedded in our system, goes back such a long time. Um, and actually, well, I could go on and on. But um, And now to hear even modern day judges saying, well, we, we can't possibly do away with it. I think where we are is that the ordinary person is led to believe that, oh, you can't have a trial by jury, um, you know, that's not allowed. Um, I think and... also having a trial by jury, I think one of the reasons why the judges probably like that idea as well is because it takes some of the heat off the judge. Because effectively it's the jury who are convicting, not the judge. All he's doing is passing down the, the sentence. Well, interestingly, you're right, and I've got to be fair the judges here um, and it is the judges themselves as I said I quoted from a lecture uh, um, just about what a couple of senior judges have said in the past the lamp that shows that freedom lives one of them um, so but a judge as you say is is trying to work within the uh, as be fair but they have to work within the system so they're sort of almost hemmed in to be fair to them so there have got to be some sort of safety valve that they can have where even they can, you know, feel that their conscience is, is being well served. And so, as you say, you can get tricky cases as well where there's, I don't know, there might be different um, groups of people involved that could get quite heated. So a trial by jury would, yeah, solve that. Mm. And how um, difficult is it to get a trial by jury then? Well, um, you have to. This is the odd thing, I think, in my experience. I don't think you'd be able to get it for council tax, would you? If that's because basically the, for that, the council hire out a, a room in the magistrate's court and they hire somebody to play judge. It's never actually really the magistrates it's weird it's so no corrupt. well i i think what you'd need to do if you um got to the stage where you were going to court and i've got to say i'm not an expert in the council tax side of things but i'm getting to know what happens in the court um and i'm being advised by someone who you know per actually purposely went through the court process on other oh, really? charges to test out the system and get to a trial by jury um so where we are with that is that if someone is put in front of a magistrate's court for non-payment of council tax for example then they should stand where they are make sure they don't come under the jurisdiction of the court because the court is looking to have a quick win if we call it that they're not interested in fair or unfair at times. Um, they just, you know, the law is the law. Um, let's just get it done. Um, whereas what the individual who's in front of the court needs to think, uh, needs to say, and um, is, well, actually, no, um, actually, um, this is about me as much about you. And also, this is a wider question. It is about me, but yeah. council tax in general, is it fair or unfair? As it is tax fair and unfair. Um, and they therefore stand in the jury, uh, stand in court, and even though they may be hit by lots of legal jargon, <clears throat> told to sit down, told to give their name, told to 
give their date of birth, usual things where you're they're trying to get you under their jurisdiction. Yeah, and they're um, trying to get you to enter into a contract. Enter into a contract. You say, I don't understand, I require a trial by jury. And that is the mantra that you would have if all else fails. And you stand there, you you because you don't recognise the court. You're polite. Mm. You're not aggressive in any way. You're not answering the judge back um, or the magistrate's back. You're standing there, sit down. No, I wish to stand where I am. You're standing in court. They then read out the charge or charges and you say, I'm innocent until proven guilty. I require a trial by jury. Um, they then start scratching their heads and say, well, you know, they might even um, question your mental state and say, well, are you fit to represent yourself, um, Mr. Smith? And, um, and, and they will use fear tactics. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, their, that's really their only... Um card isn't it it is their only card and um i i liken it a bit to a, a fun fair ride having fear and these... ignorance relying on fear ignorance. The ignorance of how yes. it actually works yeah. yeah fear and ignorance so in the court you're put under fear and also they're trying to get you underneath their jurisdiction and as you say they use words like arraignment and indictment and is he going to be on unconditional bail or and none of it it's all there to frighten you yeah. um because when once the, it all settles down they realize hang on a minute he wants a trial by jury um hmm, okay um you you can go mr smith and you might say i'm leaving at my own volition and and then you leave and you're that one step closer to a trial by jury then, because although, interestingly, the law, actually the top judges want trial by jury, equally it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. The law as a whole, and I think the legislators, they don't like it if people... Um, suggests that their legislation doesn't chime with the common people anymore, that they're a bit out of touch with um, the ordinary person. They don't like that. They like to think, oh, we've done a good job and we people should kowtow to our authority. But, not just that, but the people have also got, well, not used too much, but people have also got to bear in mind that um, a lot of these things, the acts of statutes, actually go against law. Because there's a well, there's difference between lawful and legal. They operate in legal. Mm, a lot of yeah, what illegal things actually go against lawful. I agree with you. And that's where the trial by jury is looking at things very into play. Pardon? That's where it comes into play. You're right, because it's looking at the simplest. If we look at our natural law... Um, well, if we look at ourselves as people, we naturally would understand what right and wrong is. We've got a feeling for it. We intuitively know if we've done something right or if we've upset someone or yeah. overstepped the mark with a neighbour yeah. or done something. So, as you say, legislation comes in to complicate all that, move away from our natural instincts, makes it very complicated so people can't understand the law anymore. And also, as far as taxes are concerned, if we go back to, you know, hundreds of years ago, um, it, it was only meant to be brought in when there was a war originally, you know, to pay for right, trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. And so um, you've got all these extra complications. And so where a trial by jury comes in, it brings it right back to the simplest, has he done anything wrong? How do, how do we feel from a conscience point of view? Are we looking at someone who's purposely gone out to harm someone or um, do something that is unpleasant for society? Or is it someone who's going about their everyday business, trying their best, um, may not know the intricacies of 
this new complicated legislation, which has so moved yeah, for well me, away. It's even more simple for that. This is where I think this is where juries need to come into their own. And it's not, it's well, has what that person's done, does it fall under common law? So yes. have, is there actually a crime? Is is there any loss? Is anybody hurt? If not, it, it should be it's not a it's not a crime, you shouldn't be in court. That that's, I, that's where the common law comes into it. I agree absolutely. That is the common law, and that's where it's important for the trial by jury um to happen, um, because they have got the freedom to do, say exactly what you're saying and saying. Yeah. You know, he uh, he or she, they have done no harm. My conscience tells me that they should not be in court anyway. I find them not guilty. Whereas a judge, although may try and, and I'm sure, as I say, is is, is trying to be fair, but they're also part of the executive. Um, yeah, they they if you if you understand uh i mean i don't really understand it very well mm. but they including the solicitor who works for you or your lawyer they have all signed an agreement that benefits the the beast but not you yes you're right they've all um uh, say so a barrister um you know signed up to an oath um, whereby they uphold the law. So, That's it. so the jury that, really is the only selection out of that whole array of people who aren't, um, what's the word, who aren't... Compromised, really. Compromised, the That's the word. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right, um, we are running out of time. Okay, I would, That's love fine. To get, I would love to get you back on as the as your case progresses. Um, and we can, and we can. I know you shouldn't really talk about a live case, but um, yeah, I'd love to get you back on and conclude how really, this pans out. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about trial by jury, and I. That's not only about my own case, as I've found, and I appreciate you taking an interest, um, especially as we're all, um, you know, it's local as far as you know, from an Ipswich point of view, but, um, and Suffolk, but this has a wide context across the country. And that's what I'm so pleased about. I really appreciate you giving the opportunity and More than you talking it through that this trial by jury is so important to our democracy. And we need to raise that 2%. It needs to be, you know, 80%. Um, yeah, it if, does. And, and people... And so, yeah, I, I think hopefully there more and more people will get to know, and there'll be coaches like I've got my coach. If I call him that, um, I'm happy to coach as well. Um, so, really appreciate it. And maybe at some point there'll be a Telegram group or something where, I, or there might already be one where people discuss about how you approach court without a, you know, a barrister and a solicitor and use. And trial by jury, all about yeah, trial definitely, by jury. definitely. Yeah. All right, then, mate. Well, I'm going to because it's going to cut me off at any minute. So for now, thank you very much. Um, really enjoyed listening to your your plight, and I look forward to catching up and seeing how it pans out. Nice one. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much, Chris. Really appreciate welcome, you mate. having me on. Brilliant. Thanks again, Cheers, mate. All the best. Take care now. Bye. Thanks. Bye.